Hey everyone, this is Raj from 3CB. Welcome back for another episode of some transfer analysis here with Adam Ray Vodi. Today we're going to go through his top five sleepers for Arsenal center midfield targets over the summer. Adam, how's it going, man? Well, thanks for having me on. I'm always excited to get into the weeds a little bit on uh, a bunch of players, most of whom Arsenal will never uh, even look at. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Two things. One is that this is going to be a three part series. We're going to go through sleepers and then Adam's realistic targets and then his dream scenarios. And that'll be in three separate videos. But before we get into that, for anyone who had watched the previous video on strikers, you had, you changed your formula here a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. So I've, you know, I've been doing uh, threads for, uh, you know, six to eight months or so on Twitter. And um, for the longest time with my midfield threads, I was kind of targeting somebody who might be considered more of a six uh, because I, you know, for the longest time, didn't really know if that was the plan with Thomas Partey. Um, but now, uh, especially given the results here over the past few weeks, it really seems like that could be the direction uh, of that they're going to go with with him. Um, Granite Jacob for the longest time has obviously been the guy who was thought of as the one who was more likely to leave. Um, and mm -hmm. whether that would have left a hole where there's a six or where there is an eight was always the question. But given some of the links, given some of the, the stellar play from Partey and, you know, Jacques has been great too, but, um, but, but it's kind of tweaked the formula looking, looking a little bit more all around. And I'm probably the way things are going, going to keep tweaking to put even more emphasis on like a, a creative eight uh, who can also defend. So, so it did shake things up a little bit. No, it makes sense. I mean, the more context and the more adaptations you can make, the, the more valid the analysis becomes. So on that point, let's get into your top five sleepers. So we're going to start with number five and then progress to the top sleeper. So take it from here. Yeah. And um, just kind of a, you know, definition of terms as far as what I uh, looked at when I was considering like what would be a sleeper. Um, this is somebody who is probably uh, likely to move or would be um, relatively easy uh, all things considered for an arsenal to uh, to to acquire, whether it's because of you know where they play, um, what league they're in, what their age is, you know, for whatever reason. So these are these are not the top top tier type of people. Um, we'll get into those maybe a little bit more in the other two videos. But these are these are guys who um, might turn some heads or already are and could potentially see their name come up, just haven't yet. Uh, so. What I wanted to do here was start with Amadou Haidara. Um, he's he's a really interesting player. I think he's only 24. Uh, plays for RB Leipzig. This is a relatively small sample size, 901 minutes. Um, and, you know, what's the reason there? Well, Leipzig have a lot of good midfield talent, uh, even though they lost Marcel Subitzer over the offseason. Um, they still, I think they have more midfielders than they can really find time for, although I'm not the biggest Kevin Campbell fan. Um, Haidara has played... Um, most recently, I would say mostly is like a number six, but um, I think he's he's got a little bit more versatility than that. He might be able to play as a, a partner in a double pivot. Is he a full on attacking number eight? Uh, probably not. Like uh, like most people in the RBL uh, team right now, he's got high XG numbers compared to other people just because they are generating a lot of XG. Uh, we'll check out Tyler Adams in another one of our videos here, and you'll see he's got also a very high XG buildup, which is just... Um, the XG that results in possessions in which that player does not take the shot or make the key pass. So um, a lot of midfielders for Leipzig will have a high XG buildup because a lot of their possessions end well. Um, with Haidara, you know, you get a lot of defensive ability. Um, he's also a good ball carrier. You can see here that he does do a lot of dribbling. That third ring is about uh, between the 75th and 80th percentile on the chart among people in his position. And um, he is... Uh, He's one of the better ones at bringing the ball into the box. He's one of the better ones in terms of, or sorry, I'm misreading my own chart here, but he's one of the best, one of the better ones in terms of taking a lot of dribbles and also just doing so at a very high rate of success. So mm -hmm. kind of an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting younger player had a good AFCON um, and he's been linked with some clubs, including Manchester United, who I could see, uh, you know, being interested in his profile, whether he would be ready to, you know, fix that midfield uh, is a, great question but he's looked very good recently and somebody that i i wouldn't be shocked if 
a few different other clubs became linked with him. Yeah, I mean, you even see him over here on the left-hand side, right, in terms of pressures. He seems to be have, have a pretty decent rate there as well. Like you said, this is always tilted. Some of these stats are always going to be tilted by how Leipzig play. And, you know, we'll see a little bit more of that. So that, that's some good key context. All right. So, well, before you move on, what would you, let's say Arsenal did go in for him. What valuation would you put for him? It wouldn't be very high. And I think that's part of the reason why, um, why he might be gettable uh, for just about any club. The reality is that RB Leipzig have got much bigger names that are going to mm -hmm. be popping up in transfer rumors all summer. Uh, whether you want to talk about Christopher Nkunku or Danny Olmo, uh, they have guys who are who are more valuable. And Haidara just is not uh, the big name there. I think you could even argue that a name like Tyler Adams is probably more well known. Uh, I, th I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, at the end of the day, if Leipzig were willing to let him go for something like 20 million euros or sorry, 20 million pounds, maybe 25 million euros. Um, you know, he didn't. Uh, I want to make sure that I have my numbers right. He didn't come to them expensively. Uh, he came from <laughs> Red Bull Salzburg, who they uh, obviously are going to do business with whenever they want. Um, right. But he was 18 million. So he's been there uh, for about four years, uh, which, are, you know, is probably means that his contract is also going to be winding down. So probably not the most expensive guy in the world. Gotcha. All right. Well, moving on to the next. So number yeah, four so are on the sleepers. Yeah, this is, uh, this is another sleeper um, for Monaco. And there are a few reasons why you might look at uh, Jean Lucas. Uh, if, you, if you follow me or any number of lovers of this game on Twitter, you're probably relatively aware of Aurelien Chouameni. He's the, the midfield uh, transfer, you know, superstar du jour this season, um, mm -hmm. being linked with some very big clubs. And Monaco are typically playing in a two-man midfield um, with one of either this gentleman, John Lucas, who I call him a gentleman, even though he's only 23, or uh, Yusuf Fofana, who, who we will talk about later too. Uh, so John Lucas is, is another guy a lot like Haidara who ends up being in kind of a timeshare, right? He's got only 910 minutes on this chart. Um, the two of them started together uh, in their past game on the 27th because too many was serving a red card suspension. They didn't end up, I think not winning that one it was a loss mm -hmm. um so lucas though for me is an interesting name because he has performed well with a, a, a talented partner in true many i think he's a little bit more of a of an attack-minded midfielder who could potentially work as like a number eight um he is good at playing balls through the lines uh so depending on what arsenal are looking for uh, in a striker he might be a good uh good fallback option there um you know and he as you can see from the chart, uh, he also is, is pretty aggressive defensively. He mm -hmm. will do a lot of pressing. He will uh, attempt a lot of tackles, and that means that he wins a lot of tackles. But as you can see from dribbles past, he will miss uh, and fail mm -hmm. <laughs> in, his, his, uh, in his tackling occasionally. So maybe not the most incredible defender that you'll run into. He's also um, not necessarily small, but he is not the tallest guy in the world, which means that he's not going to be an incredibly strong aerial duel winner, like a Granite Xhaka. He's also, um, you know, if I were just looking at this chart blindly, I would tell you that this guy turns the ball over too much. Um, if that is because he's also attempting a lot of dribbles, which you can see is basically at the very top of the, uh, of the, the pyramid here, um, mm -hmm. is another thing to, to look into. But I think there's a lot of talent here with John Lucas. He's only, he's only 23 um, and he's Brazilian, right? Edu loves a Brazilian lately. So, Maybe somebody that you would look at and say, uh, while all the buzz is on true of many, could he be had as kind of a, a sneaky deal? Possibly. And it depends on where Monaco end up as well, because they are still kind of sort of in the hunt for European spots. They have not had a good season, uh, but they are, they are bouncing back lately and getting closer. I think they're only like three points out of a European spot right now, but France is, uh, the Ligue is very competitive. So it'll be interesting to see which clubs end up missing out. Uh, if you follow that league, you may also know that Lille and Lyon are both not currently in the European places. Yeah, he's an interesting one just because I think his current partnership already has him alongside another very talented player. And so that context is always interesting and seeing kind of seeing 
those aspects. And I mean, the tackling, the, the, the aggressiveness, it can go one of two ways. And so, especially when you're trying to adapt, right, to the Premier League. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's always interesting context. Yeah, you All might right. worry about the discipline with him. Yep. So moving on to the next one is... Kawahi Okone, uh, also known for people who have like easier pronunciations as Manu Kone uh, uh-huh. for Russia Munch and Gladback. Um, another club that for me is way better than the table, uh, or maybe I should say they should be doing way better based on their mm-hmm. talent. Um, Dennis Sicaria already left this this season uh, on a very cheap deal to Juventus, so it's kind of a, the Kone show in the midfield there. Um, he is going to be a really interesting kid I, i'm gonna call him a kid to watch because he is only 20 um right. this is really the first time uh that he's gotten like a significant playing time at this level and while he is probably more easily classified as like a, a dm um that's i'd say that's mostly what he's playing for gladback uh some of the some of the things i've seen him do in kind of that final third, although they're not going to show up here on a radar. Um, I think he's got some really interesting ability when you get closer into like the, the penalty area. Um, just a very, uh, a very fun, very dynamic midfielder to watch, as you can see from the defensive part of this radar and the ball carrying. I mean, he's busy. He's, he's a hard worker mm-hmm. um, and somebody that I don't know if, if I could see him leaving uh, Gladback this season um, or this off season, I should say, but if uh, if anyone were to leave, who's not you know contract running down like your Marcus Turam or your um, your Brielle and Bolo, I mean he's he's got to be the most valuable guy on the on the team at this point. And with that club sitting in 13th in the Bundesliga, I think a full like 12 points out of a European spot, uh, mm-hmm. a fire. I mean a fire sale is possible, right? A good player might want out now, um, depending on the depending on the environment there. Yeah, he's an interesting one. As, I think for that last reason, especially is can you maybe kind of you know use that leverage to go and grab him at a, at, a, at a lower value and you know do it right now. And so I mean, he's I think he has more tools than he's shown offensively. And so that's and I think that obviously with sleepers, that's what you're looking for is does the person have the attributes that you can then mold into what you're looking for. And I think with obviously we've seen now with Mikel more often, he is looking for a little bit more of that, those balanced eight profiles. And so could, could be definitely an interesting. Yeah. With Kone, I'll just say recommended viewing. Um, mm-hmm. Gladback, despite being horrible in league play this season, uh, took Bayern Munich out of the, the DFB Pokal tournament um, five nil. <laughs> Yeah, really, really early. And Kone was a huge part of that. Um, I just pulled up his stat line from that game. He won 10 out of the 14 duels that he was in, uh, six for six for dribbles, and he, he also scored a goal. Um, and again, this is a 20-year-old, and I wasn't watching that game live, but I remember saying, like, what is going on? And, and like, t- you know, tuning into it. And this was, like, the, the regular starting 11 for Bayern Munich. This was not right. a cup rotation 11. So an incredible performance for sure. Yeah, it really, really was. I've seen highlights of that match and you can tell they were up, they're really up for it. And Byron kind of didn't realize maybe that there was a potential for a buzzsaw there and mm-hmm. they got buzzsawed. All right, next is number two. Yeah, so Chief Decore is a player um, that I've been banging the drum on for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, interestingly, uh, kind of a la Chuameni for me, um, really stood out as more of a safe defender destroyer type uh like a year ago um and this season has shown a lot more in terms of you know ball progression um contributing to an attack you can see the xg build up again is more in like the 75th percentile area uh the progressive passes is almost in the 90s um just doing a, a tremendous job passing he's taking uh, a pretty high number of touches and not really turning the ball over much at all um, so with Decore, uh, again, the story is maybe a little bit more uh, tilted toward like a number six, um, where, you know, you would look at him as like a, like a, a prospect. Um, Arsenal have definitely been linked to him before they were linked in the summer. And at that, at that time, it was a cheap deal. It was like 10 million pounds or 15 million pounds. Um, but he is a little bit going to be a little bit more of a defensive minded player. So with, with Thomas Partey um, excelling at the number six, and I know 
Albert Sammy Lakanga saying that he views himself more in that role. Uh, you definitely question whether he would ever pop up, but Arsenal have been linked before. Uh, Lens are having a good season. If it's going to be uh, uh, easily accomplished again is a great question. They're probably going to lose his midfield partner in Seiko Fofana, who is another fun one to watch on YouTube. He's uh, he's only, or sorry, Lens are only a few points out of a European place. And if they don't make it, um, I could definitely see them trying to sell high on a few of these guys, including Decore, who is only 22. So he's got a lot of time to be a, a great player wherever he ends up. Yeah, and then lastly, his sample size. I mean, this is almost 1,700 minutes, so it's the most uh, robust of, that we've seen of mm-hmm. any of, the, of the, the four players now mentioned. And I think, I think the issue is going to be, like you said, is a bit of a profile overlap here when it comes to him with Lokanga, obviously Partey. So I think that's really the key question. Of course, you, they're going to need a bigger squad for Arsenal. I mean, knock on wood, they make European competition. But – Again, it's all about finding the profiles that fit in the right way. Mm-hmm. I, w- I, I, I just think there might be a little much, too much overlap with him in that regard. All right, lastly, your top sleeper. Yeah, and this is like, this is a pretty deep sleeper because I don't know that I've seen uh, this particular young player linked with like anybody yet. Um, but there's a number of things going on here with Kefren Turam that I think make him uh an interesting name uh, he i mean you know speaking of interesting name i mean he's obviously that's a footballing family right his brother marcus uh-huh. is uh with with russia munch and gladback he's probably going to a bigger club this summer as well with his contract uh i think coming up in a year but so with taram you look at him he's another guy who's young um he's only been in senior football i think for like a, a little bit more than one full season uh was kind of a an occasional starter last season for Nice. And uh, it's kind of the same thing. Like he's starting some, but not all of their games. Um, nice are, have been very successful this season. They're sitting in third in, in league. Uh, so the thing about him is that he is kind of like a, the reason I put him as a sleeper is because he's like a kind of a left-sided uh, midfielder. He's played kind of more of like a, like a double pivot at times. Uh, mm. If he's going to like a, a four man midfield, um, and he's also, I've also seen him just played as like a straight up left midfielder. Um, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of interesting stuff, uh, interesting parallels with him where he is going to be primarily a left-sided uh, midfielder, which is exactly what Arsenal are looking for, right? Yep. He's, uh, you know, the questions with him, well, let, let's talk about some more of his strengths this season. I mean, you can see a, a solid ball carrier does not lose the ball very much, particularly for a young player. Uh, a decent progressive passer. So my, with my radars, that first inner ring is usually going to be about the 50th percentile. So uh, despite only being about halfway across the, the radar, um, things like his passes into the final third, his progressive passes are more likely to be like in the sixties in terms of percentile. Right. So he, he's interesting and you can see from his uh, XG that he does have some goal threat too. Um, So I just, you know, I look at him and I see an interesting player. The, the fallback on him would be, again, um, is he the type of player who's going to make the jump from France to England this season or this coming off season and be an immediate upgrade, an immediate starter? I mean, probably not. But if he were somebody that um, – if, if you were looking for somebody kind of in this profile, he's a definite sleeper. And at some point he's going to move on, and he's probably going to be a very good player. Yeah, he's certainly a, a more of a depth play than he would be to obviously bring him in into that starting position. I mean, only 20 years old as well. And so mm-hmm. and I know, and there is something to say about individuals who are in a footballing family. I mean, you're taught certain ideas and principles and approaches within that context, right? From day one, whether it's him practicing versus, you know, his, uh, his brother or whoever it is. Right. So, mm-hmm. uh, there, there is something to say for that. I think it's interesting being on the left side. He has that versatility as well. I would say go watch him play, and you'll definitely see some of those attributes that make him a very intriguing prospect. I think he's one. We'll probably see that likely make a jump, whether it's next season, right? I think, I think he's close to that inflection point. And so that, that'll be really, really interesting just to see what radars he pops up on. 
And so, he's going to get, um, even, even if he wants a, a move this summer, if they can't line anything up for him, he'll get a, a great chance to put himself in the shop window next season if he stays, because at this rate, Nice might be in the Champions League. Um, mm -hmm. And if they're not, they're most likely in the Europa League. A couple of really good chances for him to, to catch the eyes if that haven't already found him. Yeah, exactly. He's going to have more exposure in general with how they've been playing. And so that is all five. Any kind of final comments on any of these guys? Are, do you think any of them are more, quote, realistic than, than any of the others for a potential Arsenal move? Well, I mean, I think the, the hard thing about picking a sleeper is that um, with Arsenal's midfield needs at this point, you probably are talking more about somebody who's like a ceiling raiser, right? Not a floor mm -hmm. raiser. We kind of raised mm -hmm. the floor all of last summer. Yep. Uh, at this point, you're looking for somebody who, you know, is better than Granite Shaka, basically. Um, the, the list, uh, you know, for all of his flaws, the list of midfielders who are both better than Granite Xhaka and available, and let's add a third uh, criterion that is uh, the relatively young. It's not a, it's not a terribly long list, so it is hard to pick sleepers who aren't um, kind of you know shooting for the stars in terms of potential. Um, if I had to guess, you know, just based on any of these guys, if 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 one of them was the most realistic, it probably would be Haidara. But again, I, I just because he's already been linked as a transfer possibility for a few different clubs. But I don't know if he exactly fits uh, that like attacking left side at number eight. So so the profile might not be the best fit. Gotcha. Well, so speaking of realistic targets, we'll get into the top five, quote unquote, realistic in the next video. But thanks for listening and watching this one. And we'll see you soon.